Hello folks, it's me, William, with a different kind of video for you today. Today, let's talk about Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden is one of my favourite bands. Their music is a big inspiration to me creatively. In fact, I've adapted two of their songs into paintings, which I have time-lapse videos of here on my channel. I adapted Sign of the Cross from their 10th studio album, The X Factor. Not this one, from 1995, and The Klansman not this one, from their 1998 album, Virtual Eleven. Both albums are aptly titled as they are their 10th and 11th studio albums, respectively. It's important to note that both of those songs are from the Blaze Bailey era of the band, and weren't as well received by fans or critics upon release. In fact, both the albums in general, but luckily that era of Iron Maiden that featured Bailey's vocals has gained more credit over time, and fans see them as strong Iron Maiden songs, along with the rest of each album's respective track lists. Those songs are fantastic, as well as songs featuring Bruce Dickinson's vocals, who has served with the band for the longest time as well as Paul Diano's vocal contributions on their first self-titled album, and their second album, Killers, both very important, iconic Maiden albums. But anyway, Maiden are a band I've enjoyed since I was 15 years old. I'm 26 now, so I've been into them for over 10 years now, with my fanaticism reaching a point of culmination in 2017, when I saw them live for the Book of Souls live chapter tour, which was spectacular. Since then, I've tried to catch them live again, because, well, who wouldn't? They're a truly amazing live act. I tried to see them again in 2018 for the Legacy of the Beast tour, which featured Clansman and Sign of the Cross in their set list, although they sold out their UK shows, I believe, so that was a real pity. Then, I tried to see them again for the same tour in Paris in 2020, but 2020, oh well, we all know what happened there. Again, a letdown. Although, in the past two years, 2021 and 2022, the Legacy of the Beast tour is still on. It's easier when Iron Maiden come to the UK, which is where I'm from, as it's more convenient for me to see them at home. I've seen footage of the tour, but I'd much rather be there in person again, who would not? It's amazing theatre, especially after seeing them live before. I'd love to see them again. Which brings me to the subject of today's video. Iron Maiden's next tour is the Future Past Tour, starting in 2023. I've got my ticket, so cannot wait to see them live in Glasgow this summer. Currently, the set list hasn't been officially announced yet for the tour. Although I do know that songs from their newest album, Senjutsu, will be featured on the tour. Great new album. As well as songs from Somewhere in Time. Great classic album. I love the idea of merging the two different styles, two different aesthetics. West and East, past and future. Blade Runner style technology and feudal Japan. It's a unique idea for their latest tour. You could create a set list of so many amazing songs. And so I've come up with my own predictions for the future past set list. And so let's share some of those predictions now. I'm basing my predictions on the set lists of the past few live albums, particular tracks as well as the number of the songs featured, which, looking at their efforts over the past few years, that looks like a track list of between 15 and 20 songs. My estimates are also based on songs that are staples of the band, as they play live, but also popular songs of theirs and that fans really want to hear. So this is why I believe strongly that the following songs will be included. The Trooper, from Peace of Mind, goes without saying, this song is iconic, a great audience participation song with the vocals. Which is true for all of Maiden's songs, really. It's fast, energetic, got that iconic galloping bass line. Amazing. Synonymous with the band, the album artwork for the single featuring their band mascot, Edward Eddie the Head, in a British Redcoat Army uniform. Oh, 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 oh. So yes, this will be in there, always is, and we love it so. Hallowed Be Thy Name, and of course, The Number of the Beast, both from their third album of the same name, The Number of the Beast. These songs, again, are live favourites. Classic 80s metal tracks, as well as two of their best songs ever from one of their best albums. 
I still think Seventh Son of a Seventh Son is my favourite Iron Maiden album ever, but I do love Number of the Beast. When I saw them live in 2017, Hallowed Be Thy Name wasn't included, so Number of the Beast was as part of the encore, which is where I think these two tracks, as I hope for both of them to be included, because well, who wouldn't want them in there, will appear in the setlist. Blood Brothers from Brave New World, their 12th studio album from the year 2000. Another live favourite, a modern classic, I love and adore this song. I'm including this one for that reason, it tends to come up in their set lists, that and The Wicker Man from the same album, but I think this one is more likely to be included than Wicker Man, which is a great energetic show opener. This one works in the midst of other songs, we've built up the energy, this levels it off a bit, waltz, heavy metal style everybody, then amp up the power again. Speaking of which, Fear of the Dark, the title track of their ninth album from 1993. What I was saying about Maiden and audience participation songs, this is perhaps the best example of that, or one of the best examples. Such a great, dark atmosphere built up to all this frenetic energy in the song. Even when it gradually eases away at the end, it stays with you, the experience. Especially if it's played live. What bassist and band leader Steve Harris likes to do as a writer is treat the melody as transferable, in that any guitar melody can be a vocal melody. So the crowd can sing along with the song, irrespective of the lyrics. The lyrics matter, of course, to the story that's being told in the song, but this is a way of talking in a universal language musically, and this is the success of Iron Maiden's musicianship, and others in the metal genre and beyond. Senjutsu, the opener and title track of their 17th studio album, their latest album from 2021. Again, this song has that audience participation, universal language quality to it, starting in the rhythm section, and working up to the vocal and guitar melodies as the song progresses. So clearly the live experience was considered when writing this song. This is a great, very strong track to include, particularly in the concept of bringing in songs from both Senjutsu and Somewhere in Time. Go with strong songs from both albums. I'm talking from the band standpoint, but also songs that I would love to hear as a fan, thinking, what would I want to hear? As well as thinking, realistically, what could go into the set list? And this is definitely one of those. Lyrically with Senjutsu, there's a theme in the title song that gets called back in the song Hell on Earth, the closing track of Senjutsu. So I think that song will be included too. Or should be included, but more on that soon. Talking though of songs I love, Stratego, another Senjutsu gem. I love the rhythm and the melody as ever, but the lyrics are fantastic, the way they cut in. And I love the chorus. It's very euphoric and plays into what Bruce Dickinson, the singer for the band, calls theatre of the mind, which means, as the song is sung, Bruce sees movies of what he's singing play in his mind, and we're invited as listeners to engage our brains in the same way, similar to what the late great Ronnie James Dio did as frontman for the band Rainbow. Both Dickinson and Dio love people to use their imaginations the way they did in their writing and their performances. So, going back to my own work as an artist, I've always seen Maiden as a rich source of inspiration for what I do. You can dream up whatever you want, listening to the music, be taken on a journey, and that's what Stratego does. The writing on the wall, the lead single of Senjutsu, an amazing and addicting piece. It's an interesting example of the three guitarists, Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, and Yannick Gers, working together in tune. Smith in particular is sensitive to the intonation of the guitars, which this achieves sonically, plus the propulsive rhythm of Steve Harris' bass playing only adds to this song's strengths. The subject matter of Maiden songs often have religious ideas in them, specifically Christian, but like Western pop culture as a whole, although they have, as Ted Turno, author of Pop Logetics would say, a messy mixture of the two, of Christian or Christian-related things, however slight, and other ideas too, from different cultures and different philosophies. I'll explain. While the lyrics to Writing on the Wall reference biblical events, referring largely to Belshazzar's feast from the Book of Daniel in the Old Testament, and the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse in the Book of Revelation from the New Testament, 
The music video features some pagan imagery with the five-pointed star, also a reference to Greek folk tales with the Minotaur in a crucifixion pose, referencing Roman capital punishment, while also being Da Vincian in its look, also referencing the Legacy of the Beast tour that Maiden did previously. I look at this not as a slight at the death of Christ, or even a reference to the Transfiguration, as the song is not about Christ, although Maiden do reference Christian history. He gave his life for us, he fell upon the cross and concepts in their music. To die for all of those who never mourn his loss. Although in this music video, we see Adam and Eve, the first man and woman in the book of Genesis referenced. The music video is essentially Maiden's greatest hits, with some of their album artworks and singles being referenced, and it's full of different cultural vignettes, like the fall of the British Empire. The song itself, though, is full of life, Adrian Smith, who wrote it, really let loose on his solo. And it's great. I like it. The lead singles of all of Maiden's albums get their due credit live, so this song will be included, I'm 100% certain. Days of Future Past. Not this one. No question that this song will be included. It's the basis for the title of this tour. And while it's not my favourite track from the album, wait for it, I enjoy it a lot from the track listing. The haunting, layered harmony vocal, which is a defining part of the Bruce Dickinson era and style of Maiden, isn't perfect, but it doesn't feel as disparate as some of the layering in other songs. The production of their music can vary on irritatingly weak despite the strength of their songwriting. So great. But that's what they're like in the studio. They're always infinitely better live, even with Bruce's voice aging and changing in recent years. So guys, do yourselves proud, I know you can do it. The Time Machine, based on the H.G. Wells book of the same name, at least going by the title. Full disclosure, I haven't read the book, so I can't comment on whether this adapts the book lyrically. Unlike Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the Samuel Taylor Coleridge poem, which I've read, and the song adapts the text faithfully, as well as being one of their best, ambitious songs. The Time Machine is one of my favourite songs from Senjutsu, and I just really want to hear songs I like from the album, most of which I think are strong, energetic and layered musically and lyrically, but also fun for the band to play live. So again I'm thinking realistically what could be in the set list, by and large, wrought with energy, but the mellow, more acoustic intro to the song, which sounds like Steve Harris and Yannick Gurr's guitar playing, reminds me of the intros to their 2010 song, The Talisman. Also to the title track of their 2015 album, The Book of Souls. In their quest to master the intro to their songs, or at least be experimental with it, that and the outro. Betrothed to despair. These great little progressive metal interludes help make this a great new worthy inclusion for like the middle of the set list. So fingers crossed for this one being in there. Darkest Hour, yes, just like the movie of the same name about Winston Churchill, which this song is all about. In a unique bit of experimentation for Iron Maiden, this song opens with sound effects of seagulls, very different for them, brings to my mind the Normandy landings, or maybe it's a sign of peace after the war. It stands out for them in terms of sound rather than concept, as this isn't the first time it's happened, live or otherwise. fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Yeah, some great riffs and I love the post-chorus chants of The Darkest Hour. This is one to sing along to and get lost in the midst of. Very immersive. On the subject, Death of the Celts. This song feels like a cousin to the clansmen. In terms of sound, first and foremost, 
but also in terms of subject matter, as the Klansman is about the Scottish Highlands and its people, Death of the Celts is about England and its people, pre-Roman invasion, though while the Klansman feels rather more triumphant in its feel, Death of the Celts, it ends on a melancholic note, but effectively so, as the rest of the song is so high energy, slightly repetitive lyrically maybe, but the bass gallops so well, and the vocal melody and guitar melody is epic very free-flowing and makes you want to sway, me anyway, and headbang all the way along. This song is euphoric, has to be included, the crowd will love it. So now we come to my favourite Senjutsu song, Hell on Earth, the closing track of Senjutsu, and my favourite song on it, hands down, it's very moving, almost to the point of tears. very immersive, highly energetic, and with the most addicting earworm riff on the album. One of their most memorable ever in my opinion. The same going for the lyrics and ever evolving melody in their prog metal style. It calls back a lyric from Senjutsu, so the songs parallel. It's like everything comes full circle, the way this album begins and ends, which could be the basis for a concept album, or at least a group of songs that tell a story on the album, a la Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. But there's not enough of a theme running through Senjutsu like there is on Seventh Son. Which is... it's all cool. Hell on Earth, despite its length, I do think it would be amazing live. I think Empire of the Clouds would be a fantastic live performance, but it's more likely this to be played, rather than that 18-minute piano-based epic. As it means being self-reliant rather than having a pianist join them. Not as Maiden and Keys don't mix, I think they could. It's just all you need is Nico on drums, plus Bruce, Steve, Adrian, Dave and Yannick doing what they do best, and you're great. Saying that, Yannick's more spiky, less processed style of playing is very apparent here, which creates this angst. And the interplay with everybody else is strong. Great mixture, but you can pick everybody else out so well too. So I've covered almost everything in my predictions list. What remains is some standout songs from somewhere in time that I estimate will be on the Future Past Tour. Yes, Caught Somewhere in Time, the first song you hear when you throw on the Somewhere in Time album being played in the setlist, perfect. This song has some great Christian symbolism in it. And it's a real headbanger. Galloping rhythms, you've got to love it. Aesthetically, this song, like all of the Somewhere in Time songs, has Steve Harris synthesized bass on it. Very different style to the Senjutsu sound, in fact the majority of Iron Maiden's sound. It's only if synth sound effects have since been used in their later albums that their music reminds me of this choice, like The Darkest Hour as I mentioned before, but also like the intro to Senjutsu. Or the intro to If Eternity Should Fail from 2015. Wasted Years, a standout single from Iron Maiden and a live favourite. About living life to the fullest, experiencing everything you can, getting through various challenges that are thrown at you, and especially not worrying about what might have been, just going ahead, and sometimes there's nothing else for it. Very positive, encouraging message, some of their best lyrics ever.
Interestingly, Steve Harris wrote all the songs on Somewhere in Time, and the majority of Sunjutsu. If you're going to do a set list of songs from Sunjutsu and Somewhere in Time, this is 100% guaranteed to be included for how beloved it is. Stranger in a Strange Land, some of Adrian Smith's best work, if not the most iconic. With his characteristic, dramatic, and cliffhanger-like solos where you hang on every note, this track is proven to be included, as it's in the initial viral marketing for this tour, and as well it should be. It's epic and a standout from the album. It's very focused, majestic, powerful, and visceral. Well then, my final prediction is a song that Maiden have not played for years and years, one much loved and missed by all of us fans. Yes, Alexander the Great. The Great, the Great Alexander the Great. <laughs> now it's been such a long time since we've heard this one live, like I've said, and when I heard Maiden were going to feature Somewhere in Time songs on this tour, in my head I was thinking, they have to include this one, they have to, they know everyone's going to love it. So this is what I meant earlier on. I'm trying to realistically predict what Maiden would play, as they know what us fans love to hear, and that has an impact, but also strong songs of theirs from the past as well as the present. Aha! Uh -huh. That has an impact on their set list too. So this is why I created this list the way I did, thinking what would I love to hear, as well as great songs from their catalogue. The intro to Alexander the Great reminds me a lot of what Steve Harris would do, with the intro for Sign of the Cross, from the Blaze Bailey era. Which makes sense as Steve wrote both songs, they have his symphonic structure. But also, Alexander the Great tells an epic story of the ancient Greek conqueror. Sign of the Cross is also epic in scope, and paints the picture of a tragic hero of sorts in each narrative. Great songs influenced by great songs helps them to live on. But it's always great hearing the original inspiration live. Fantastic. I think his Maiden are a lot older now, and they plan to keep touring until they can't physically manage it any longer. Which they say themselves, so I feel okay saying that. So I say, include this one. Please, please, please. Maybe as the closing track, as I'm listing it at the end of my predictions, funnily enough. Capping the show in a really exhilarating way, while still leaving us hungry for more, as they say. Always leave them hungry. Boy, I'd love all of that. Well, that's my fantasy set list. You can tell I'm a Maiden fan through and through. I love their music and I can't wait to see them live again. Can't wait to know the songs they play and how close my predictions are, or are not, to the actual set list. We'll just have to wait and see. So folks, take care, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, ringing that notification bell to get notified on all updates as they come through in the future. Enjoy the show if you get to see them live. Up the irons, everyone!